In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how you can create a hype sports edit like this. 24 years old, born in Victoria, Rorka, shining star, obviously. A nice drive to start. Thought of a going right back to now. And the Lions continue to click offensively. Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports and videography. And in this video, we're gonna be breaking down one of my most recent edits. I'm gonna take you through the full timeline. We're gonna get into Premiere. And I'm basically gonna show you exactly how I make my hype sports videos and all the techniques that I use, why I make certain choices, the effects that I put into it, and why I do certain things in certain places so that you can take all the concepts that I apply to my videos and apply them to your videos to start making some hype sports edits. The video that we're looking at today was edited for the CFL, which is the Canadian Football League, who I work for as a videographer and video editor. But yeah, let's get into this. The first thing that you have to do when you're putting together really any video, but especially a sports video, is look through all your footage. You have to really understand all the footage you're working with and you're not really gonna be able to make the best video possible if you don't know all the footage that you have at your disposal. So what I usually do, and for this game I was working with a broadcast, so I just laid the broadcast out, but if you're working with clips off of a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, you can use the exact same concept, is I'll make a sequence where I just lay all my footage out and then I go back and look through it after. So, you can see here I have a sequence called footage call and I call it this because this is the sequence where I call upon footage to be in my video. But I see here I've got the entire broadcast of this game all laid out and then I have individual snippets here that I've chosen and specifically downloaded. And every time I wanna use a clip, I lift it up above my timeline here so that I know that I've already selected it and that's kind of how I'll make note of all the clips that I've used. So let me just show you here real quick. If I just extend this back out normally, if I want to use a clip, I'll just highlight it and command K and then I'll go option and up arrow to bring it up and command L to separate audio and videos. Cause I don't always want to bring the commentary along with me when I'm bringing the video clips. I usually grab the commentary later. And then usually I'll have a 16 by nine timeline right down here where I put together my assembly edit. And if I want to bring a clip in here, or let's say I want to use this clip, I'll just drag it down and drop it right in there and I can position it how I want. So that's how I go about looking through all my footage, identifying good parts of my footage and then bringing them into my timeline. Now, another important thing that you want to do right off the bat when you first start a video is pick music. The music's really going to dictate the pace of your edit and you want to make sure the music is fitting with whatever the message of your video is, because if it's not, then the whole thing's going to be out of whack and it's not really going to make sense if you have like a slow dramatic song with a fun hype edit that's supposed to be showing somebody's success. So for this video, I went with a song that's like more fun, more hype, and I wanted to make sure that there was a good mix of lyrics and points where we just had music. So I downloaded both the version with the lyrics. And I also downloaded the instrumental version of this song and I went and cut back and forth between the two. All right, so you get the gist. Another version that I cut up has instrumental and lyrics and sounds something like this when I put it together. All right, so you kind of get it, but you see how there was moments in there where I had lyrics and there was moments in there where I didn't have lyrics. And this is because I want to leave room for my commentary so that I can have the commentators of the game make comments in my edit that reflect the goal of the edit. And the goal of this edit is to showcase Nathan Rourke as a young shining star quarterback. And then I can also kind of give the viewer a chance to breathe and just focus on the visuals by having the music right out for a little bit and going and toning back on the commentary. So I think finding a good mix of commentary and music is really important. And that's why I cut the music up the way that I did. So this video doesn't just come together in four by five on the timeline. This video actually first starts here where I make it in 16 by nine 
this footage was shot widescreen 1920 by 1080. So this is the 1920 by 1080 sequence where I go through and assemble the entire video. And then once I have this video assembled with no color, no effects, then I copy the sequence. So just like this, I select the sequence and go Command C, Command V, and then I'll change this to four by five. Let's click on this. And then I would go sequence, sequence settings, and change this to 1080 by 1350. And that gives us a four by five sequence, which you can see here. And then at this point, I start scaling clips up. After I scale clips up, then I'll add effects and I'll add color. So your basic hype edit can be divided into three parts. And like any story, you have a start, a middle, and an end. And the start of your edit, you want to have really grab the viewer's attention. There's a lot of noise on social media. There's a lot of videos out there and you need a reason for yours to stand out and actually keep someone's attention for a few seconds. So you wanna make sure those first like five to eight seconds of your video are awesome, super engaging, pop off the feed and make someone want to spend 30 to 60 seconds of their life watching whatever you have to show them. If I'm gonna go crazy on effects, I'm gonna do it at the start of my video. I always put a couple of my very best shots here and I generally just wanna make this like the most eye-catching, alluring part of my video to make the viewer see what comes next. So let's actually go into the sequence here where I have my full edit. And you can see at the start of the video here, I have first a close-up shot of our subject and we have some effect layers on here. So I have this uni chroma town effect from Red Giant, which is basically giving me like RGB effect plus CC radial blur at the same time, which you can do in After Effects, obviously. But I just, for time's sake, added this paid effect and I have tutorials and this type of stuff. So I'll put like some sort of RGB transition tutorial that I've done up here and you can go give it a look. But I have this one effect at the start because I kind of want to make this pop out a little bit more. And then I also have my color grade right up here, which you can see toggle on and off. And I have this overlay at a reduced opacity to give everything kind of a nice orangey tint since the team wears orange uniforms that we're focusing on and I thought it'd be kind of fitting. And I have this quick little transition in here as well. Shining star, obviously. So the first five seconds here, I start on an ISO shot of our player. And then I have this little bit right here. I've done kind of like a frame and frame effect with the chroma town effect at the same time. So you can see it's all kind of RGB and the frame at the edges is being like pulled and I have the quarterback right in the middle who is our focus, kind of like with every, all the lines on the edges going in towards him. So I thought that'd be a cool effect to start. And I did this frame and frame type of thing by basically just taking this first clip that we had here and just moving it so that it was also underneath in this second part here. So this right here, This clip in the background is just the same clip that we used at the start, but I've added a lumetri color effect to desaturate it. So you can see I've got the vibrant low, I've got the saturation low. I have this huge faded film effect on it. And then I've added a Gaussian blur as well to show it as a background element. And the border that I've created here, you can see the border more clearly when I take this effect off. This black border that I have is actually just this clip again with the exposure brought all the way down. So you can see if I click here, I have the exposure at minus five and the scale at 102. And it's the same clip that I have on the top here, but because I've just scaled it up a little bit and exposed it low, it's kind of created this nice black border for me and I've dragged that beneath me to give me like a frame around the video here. And then we have this quick transition a shining star, obviously. into a close-up <laughs> shot of our player Sleep. and then another quick transition and we're into the video. So in the middle of your video, you want to establish what the actual point or focus of the video is going to be while showcasing a progression of events and eliciting as much emotion as possible from your audience. That doesn't sound easy, but there's a few ways you can do this. One way is through music. You can also do it through visuals and through commentary. And all three really have to work together well. So you can see at that part right there, the 15 second to the 22 second mark of the video, literally right before the drop in the music, we have the commentator saying in an emphatic tone, 
that the Lions scored a touchdown, that the offense is clicking, and this gives the impression that the team's doing really well with this new young quarterback at the star when paired with the visual of the quarterback sitting in the pocket, evaluating his options, and then making a good pass into the end zone. And then, of course, you get the celebration shot at the end, which I think just shows that the team is having a lot of fun, they're enjoying themselves, and they're playing good football. Another technique that I'm using with my actual shot selection to place emphasis on the quarterback is I'm repeating shots or showing multiple angles of shots that I think are worthy of emphasis. So because we're focusing on the quarterback in this video, whenever the quarterback makes a good throw, I'm making sure to show at least two, sometimes three angles of that shot. I'm always making sure that when the quarterback throws, I'm showing it more than once. So here at the 23 second mark, right after the drop, throw, throw, and there's the catch. And then we end up going through a couple of celebration shots, we show the receiver catching the ball, and then we're back on the quarterback celebrating while the music says, rolling like a boss. There's actually one moment right here at the 32 second mark, so just about halfway through the video, which is the point where I feel like people's attention kind of starts to fall off a little bit, where I've cut away all audio except for the music, and I've returned back to that frame and frame effect that we did within the first five seconds. So I'll let you listen to this part specifically, and then we're gonna talk about it. This kid is mature beyond his years, man. By suddenly cutting away all the audio, all the commentary, all the fan noise, and leaving just the music, it kind of jolts the viewer and brings their attention back because it's a very sudden change of pace that they weren't expecting. You wouldn't expect all the audio to just disappear. There's never a time in real life where all the audio around you suddenly goes completely silent on the snap of a finger. But I can do that to grab your attention in video. And by returning this, I'm not gonna say complicated, because it's not that complicated, but by returning this more like intricate, I guess, effect to the video, we're kind of bringing viewers back in, since this is that attention grabbing effect that we're leaning on to keep viewers engaged. And it's also establishing a bit of a theme to the video, since we're reusing effects throughout, which is probably something that you should be doing as opposed to using random varying effects throughout your video that aren't really cohesive with each other. So at the end of your video, you wanna emphatically re-emphasize the point of the edit and have some sort of call to action. So at the end of my video, I have clips and a commentary of the quarterback stepping back in the pocket and breaking the all-time passing record for a Canadian quarterback in a single game. I, it was like almost 400 yards or something he threw for, it was ridiculous. It was an all-time record and we made note of that in this video as kind of the big thing that happened this night and it was the big thing that happened this night which is why we're putting this video together so i'll, I'll let you listen to this and then we'll talk more about it again passes up it's good it's complete the single game passing yard record by a canadian quarterback now belongs to nathan Rourke. in the last six seconds there we say the single game passing yard record for most yards by a canadian quarterback belongs to nathan Rourke. like plain terms this is why this guy's good. He did this tonight. And like you saw at the start of the video, he's only 24 years old. And we accompany that obviously with shots of the quarterback here making the pass that broke the record. But we also have the shot here of him celebrating with one of his receivers. We got shots of him running back to the bench and close-ups of him being all excited and yelling. We're establishing him as a cool, fun, an intense character who you can get behind. So not only is he successful, but he's also a cool guy on the field. He's not just like robo quarterback who's gonna sit in the pocket and make every perfect throw and be emotional. It's like, he's got a little spunk to him. He'll celebrate, he gets his guys involved, he's a good team player. And we're establishing all of that while showing that he's broken a record and is a talented quarterback all in the last five seconds of the video. This has been a very long and detailed look at how I create a sports hype video. If you liked it, then please subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos similar to this one on a regular basis. And I would love to have you around for that. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, drop it down in the comment section and I would be so happy to get back to you. Um, and yeah, I don't really have anything else to plug or anything like that. <coughs> oh my God. We almost made it to the end of the video there. I don't really have anything else to plug or anything like that. So until next time, peace.